All right, people, I'm back again. Let's talk some more. Still stuck in traffic. Now, to get to my destination, 19 miles. Now, ask yourself, does 19 miles normally take 50 minutes? But sometimes 19 miles can take 50 minutes. Sometimes 19 miles can take two hours. I've been there. I went to travel to deliver some furniture years ago to Washington. I mean to Baltimore. I mean to, uh, what is it? Uh, Atlantic City. And when we get to got to a certain area, it took to get 30 miles or 60 miles, it took three hours. And there was nothing we can do. Sometimes in life, it's gonna, you're going to reach points like that. What you think supposed to take three minutes might take you an hour. Do you understand? Just take in regards to trees and plants. They don't just grow overnight. You ain't going to wake up and every plant grow different. So think about every seed you plant grow different. And the thing is, God has a plan that he's planted that you don't even know about. Do you understand? Just take Joseph's story again. Joseph had a vision growing up. He's, he was like, Ma, he like, Dad and my brothers. And guess what, man? I had a dream last night that y'all bowed down to me. He didn't explain it down that way. But basically, that's, it was like, we're going to bow down to you? You're the younger brother? Even, if, even his daddy laughed. <laughs> I'm your daddy. Yeah, I would never. I ain't. <laughs> Then his brother used to make from the dreamer. <laughs> but his father, Israel, his father loved him, Joseph, to death. You understand? He loved him a lot. You know what I'm saying? That, that brought jealousy. It wasn't Joseph's fault that his dad, he loved Joseph so much because he was the child of his old age. Like, you ain't supposed to be here. I remember my dad used to tell me all the time, you were a mistake. I knew he was joking with him, but you know, I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, don't take everything so serious. You understand? But like, he was the blessed child. Do you understand? All the other children were blessed too. How were they were blessed? They were blessed through their brother. When drought came up, all that... And they bowed down to him. When drought came and all that, they had to come there for food. And they found, come to find out it was their brother the whole time. The brother, they forgot it. The brother, they didn't left for dead. Don't tell them what God is using you for in regards to your family. You might be distanced from them right now. You might not even be close to them. Or people, or places, things. And you're like, man, this is so lonely. I don't think y'all realize. Yes, Joseph had a family and everything, but when he saw his brothers, all kind of floods of emotions came. They say he went back and cried so loud that his servants were like, what in the world is going on? You understand? And he wanted to tell his brother the truth, but he played a little trick on him. He did. I ain't saying it was right, but what would you do in that situation? You might have done the same thing. You might have done differently. Who knows? You understand? Who knows? But just think about that situation. All he knew he was had a vision. Y'all bowed down to me. I'm just telling you the dream I had. Y'all bowed down to me. No harm, no foul. And their jealousy and their envy and their hatred for their brother caused them to push him to another level. Probably He probably would have never been pushed that way if that all things work for the good of those that love God who are called to purpose. If those jealous folks, which was his family members, and those when they did that evil thing to him, when they threw him in that pit for that one person to walk by at that, think about it. Everything had to line up perfectly. He had to be in that pit right then for that person to walk, drive by, and lift him up out the pit, and then sell him at the same time that he did for him to be right there to be bought by Potiphar. And then he saw that Joseph was smart. He wasn't just a any slave. He was educated. He was smarter than the average bear. Do you understand? 
Ain't that great? You know? What do you do, man? So I'm just telling, trying to tell y'all something. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, that, you ain't understanding what I'm saying. When I say do nothing, I'm saying do what you normally do as a Christian. Do what God said on your mind to do. Even if what you feel is in your heart has not transpired, giving up can be, well, God's taking too long. I'm not going to even worry about serving God wholeheartedly. Oh, I'm, I'm going there today. That's what giving up could be. Like, I'm, well, what I've been praying for ain't happening, so I ain't even worried about it. I'm just going to, I ain't even worried about helping nobody else or nothing else. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to start living back for the world. I ain't worried about it. Now, you're going to fall into that category of the thousands that fell in the wilderness. Now, you're going to fall in that category. But you can bounce back. Just don't give up on God. God said, I will forsake them that forsake me. You know what happens a lot of times in the wilderness and everybody go through their wilderness battles? People, st you start forsaking God. And there's so many ways to forsake him. I'm just using these stories as a reason, as an example. But forsaking God could be a lot of things, people. A lot of things. Not doing what he command of you. I didn't say keep his commandments, but he wants you to do that too. But you may not be doing what he commands of you to do. You ever thought about that? You got things that he done set on your heart to do. I just read a story of somebody I went to school with, and it was just so great. You know, I just put a heart by it. But it was so great of a story, and it was true. She was a chef, and she was trying to follow her dream. And at one point in time, she got to the point where she had a job interview, and she was like, I'm not going. But she did. And come to find out they didn't heard about her. And she get a job working there. And she's promoting and doing all these things. But she went through it. She told a long story. She went through a lot of hard things. And I love stuff like that. I'm not one to be saying to a lot of stuff on your power profile. But I pay attention to a lot of things. I'm just not all that talkative as I am on these videos as I, as I am on Facebook in regards to a lot of things. And I don't like really posting on people pages too because this day and age people to take anything you say and run with it as if it's something else you know and i really ain't got time for it that's why i just stick to my videos and this and that and i don't even want to like a lot of things that people say people like if they don't like what you say they don't like you whatever having who that liking what you say don't like you just because a person don't encourage you by saying like, that doesn't mean they're not being encouraged by you or you don't encourage them or this or that or whatever. You understand? There lies the problem. We live in a world where people like, he said, do your works in secret so your father that see you in secret rewards you openly, right? Are you really seeking a bunch of likes? I'm asking y'all some questions here. You want that much attention? Man, nobody never come into my post. Are you doing it for them to come in on them? Are you doing it for them to like them? Or are you just doing it because you want to do it? You see, if you love doing something, you can be the worst rapper in the world. But to you, it sounds good. And you'll make song after song, even if you the worst rapper in the world. And if you don't care about what people say about it, you're going to keep doing it. Right? And eventually you might even get better. Might even get better. Think about that. While everybody's backing you and then they can start not listening to your music. Man, that's your garbage. Yeah, 10 years ago. <laughs> You've been lost for 10 years. In these 10 years, oh man, I don't know why, I didn't got better. <laughs> I didn't got better. And in 10 years, you didn't got better what you do. But you're not studying what people say. 
or how people react or don't react to what you're doing that God has set on your heart to do. So what do you do? What do you do? Do you stay at it? Or do you give up? Just because nobody is listening. You know, I've, I'm telling y'all this because I've thought about it. Why well, make videos? Nobody ain't watching them. I didn't thought that way before, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of passion. Why I keep painting? And nobody ain't buying it. Why I keep posting this? Do it because you want to do it. Why do you need to get a long game? To keep motivating. You got God as the biggest motivator that's patting you on your back when nobody else is. Every time he said a new recipe on your mind. Or whatever it is he wants you to do. A new idea. In my case, a new song. You said, why am I giving you these songs? Well, thank you. Calm down. You understand? You know, it's hard for some people. And I watch people say things about people who follow after that dream. You need to give it up. I remember the last Mr. Big and Mobile. If you're a certain age, if you're over 35, you need to give up on what you've been doing making music. I'm saying he was talking about music. You need to give up on making music. Because all the industry is looking for is young and dumb folks. Well, one thing you forgot, Mr. Big, rest in peace. I'm not trying to be the part of the industry. Oh, I'm not trying to get rich. Oh, I'm just trying to make music for the Lord. At the time, I wasn't even trying to make music of the Lord, but what he said kind of turned me against him. And when he said it, it's like, give up. I always used 2 Chain because he was up in his 30s when he finally made it to where he is today. You understand? I like a lot of people work at it. You understand? So, it is what it is. You know, that's crazy I just said that and something just popped up on my phone. It is what it is. You understand? I don't like being rushed. I don't. I really don't. You know, I got a pace. Not a slow pace, not a snail pace, not a super fast pace, but I got a pace. Even when I cook, I don't like the rush cooking. I don't like it. Let's put it this way. You ain't got to rush God. There's a time to move fast. You'll know. Your body will let you know. You got to speed up. Your body will let you know also what? Slow down. Be patient. He said you have not because you ask not so you can consume it on your lust. Think about it. A lot of us don't get what we're asking for because we're asking for it for the wrong reason. Why do you want to do this? You know, I think we, we live in a world, I, I know, according to biblical, we, we're supposed to put others before ourselves. Not sacrifice our belief system, but put others before ourselves. Look out for the welfare of others. You understand? That's hard in this world. And I know it is. But don't be a fool. I just told a story from Proverbs about a man that's a poor person that gives his money to the rich. How foolish that is. You know, don't be a fool. Go at your affairs with discretion. You understand? Be smart. Why do you think Joseph was put in the position he was put into? Take David. David didn't even know he was being molded, molded to be a warrior king. Slaying, slaying bears. <laughs> Raising sheep. This boy didn't kill huge animals at like 13, 14 years old. All that preparation was prepping him for Goliath. He had no fear. 
even in the old age, I'm still coming out there with y'all. I'm still going out there with y'all, mighty men. Then he almost died. Hey, King, it's, it's not good for you to keep going out there. Hey, we got this from now on. Gotta, gotta step in. I got this. You step back. I just want y'all to know that, man. Just be patient. Even though the road seems long and rough, but it's worth it. And you may not even see a lot of things that's going on, how you want to see it. But just remember what faith is. Faith is the belief in things hoped for, things not yet seen. If you got it, do you still hope for it? You understand? It's believing in something you can't see. It goes back to believing in God, believing in something you can't see. Believing in something you can't see or throw all kind of things in your way. You understand? Because there's so many things try to stop you from believing in God. Let's say you've been praying for a husband, a wife, a passion of yours to come to pass. But you can't see it. And you know, during that time path, all kind of things are going to come their way. You try to defer you from your hopes. When you stop hoping for it. You may not get it. Oh, God never answered none of my prayers. A double-minded person can't expect to receive anything from God. Make up your mind. Tell me something good and stick to it. Does it make sense? Stick to it. I'm telling you. It's crazy out here, man. Man, if I could tell you, I could tell y'all so many things I would. I want to tell you, but it's a lot of it's too personal. You know what I'm saying? But want to talk to me on a personal level that's a whole nother level but a lot of stuff is just so personal i can't relate to my relationship with god without telling you something about myself telling you a little bit pieces about myself but i will when the time is right but that's all i got for you I ain't gonna talk to head up i do enough talking i ain't got no less time been stuck in traffic for about an hour now have a blessed day <laughs>